Hello, Algebra 2 students. I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of. Today we're going to be looking at the next of our uh, conic sections, and that one is going to be the ellipse. So please copy down your title, equation of ellipses, and our objective. And our objective today is to learn the specifics of equations of ellipses. Okay, now what you're going to see today is that there is a little bit more to reading the equation of an ellipse because there's more information in the equation, but you're going to find that it is not really all that much harder to graph, and you'll like this one because we don't have to worry about multiple forms of the equation, so we're not going to have to do any crazy completing the square and stuff like that in most cases. Okay, now the general equation that we looked at for the equation of an ellipse was x squared over m plus y squared over n was equal to 1. And what we said was that m and n are just a couple of constants that are going to change the uh, coefficients of x squared and y squared respectively. Since those coefficients change, or the m and n, uh, values in the denominator are going to mess with the coefficients of the numerator. That's going to cause uh, one of our uh, axes to be stretched out or compressed uh, more than the other is, so we don't end up with a circular shape. We end up with an elliptical shape. Okay, but more specifically, a little extra information about the equation of a, an ellipse is, of course, as we did with the center of our circle, the center of our ellipse can be moved. Okay, so x minus h quantity squared over m plus y minus k quantity squared over n always equals 1. Okay, now as I said, m and n are information uh, regarding the axes of the ellipse. One of them is going to stretch it out in an x direction or compress it in an x direction, and the other one's going to compress it or stretch it in the y direction. Now a little bit more information about those uh, axes lengths, okay, is the lengths are going to be two times whatever the square root of m is and two times whatever the square root of n is. Now the reason the two is built into these little expressions here is because the square root of m and the square root of n is a measurement in the axis direction. So square root of m is a measurement in the x-axis direction. Square root of n is a measurement in the, in the y-axis direction. So why do we double it? Because that measurement goes each direction. So it's kind of like figuring out a diameter across the ellipse and from top to bottom in the ellipse, okay, and uh, instead of a radius, okay, is a kind of an easier way of thinking about it. And, of course, our ellipse is located at its center, which is h comma k. As before, the negative values are built into the formula, so this is still a little bit different than how we have been reading k in the past. We're used to k being a positive value. Now it's built in as a negative value. And a little bit more information can be told by M and N. We have two axes in an ellipse. One of them is horizontal and one of them is vertical. But more specifically, they are referred to as a major axis and a minor axis. Okay. So referring back to the equation, if M is a larger number than N, then that is going to stretch it further uh, in the x-axis direction, the horizontal direction, than it is going to stretch it in the y-axis direction, the vertical direction. So if m is larger than n, then the sideways axis is going to be the major axis, and the vertical is going to be the minor axis. And the exact opposite of that applies also. If n is the larger of the values, then that's going to make it uh, larger vertically than it is horizontally. Okay, now that's a little bit more information to consider uh, when it comes down to the ellipse as compared to the circle. But let's look at the important pieces of information here. Let's check out an equation and see what questions we want to be able to answer about this in order to graph it. 
Okay, so our equation we're looking at now is x minus 1 quantity squared over 25 plus y minus 7 quantity squared over 9 equals 1. Now, an important thing to remember, that 1 is supposed to be a 1 on that side of the equal sign. So if it is not, you would definitely want to divide by whatever value that is. Instead of a 1, divide that value to the other side, which would change your denominators on the left. But since we have a 1 on the right-hand side, we are good to go. And here are the questions that we really need to be able to respond to in order to be able to get our graph rolling. We need to know where the center is, obviously. That's where our ellipse is going to uh, be stationed at. And we will need to know which axis is going to be the major axis and which axis is going to be the minor axis. And then we would need to know the lengths of those axes so that we could plot our north, south, east, and west foundation points in the graph. And then we could sketch the rest of our ellipse. Okay, so let's see if we can find, uh, follow along with some of these values. Okay, how about the center of this ellipse? Remember that the uh, numerators are supposed to say x minus h and y minus k. They do both say minus. That means the 1 and the 7 did not do anything to change those signs, so they must be positive. Our center is at 1, 7. Okay. Now, let's see if we can't address which axis is going to be major and which axis is going to be minor. Now, this deals specifically with the denominators of our squared terms. Okay, so as you can clearly see, the denominator that's associated with x squared is larger than the denominator associated with y squared. That's going to mean our major axis is horizontal. It's going in the x direction. So our major axis is going to be the x axis. Okay, and obviously the minor axis is going to be the y axis. Now let's look at the lengths. Okay, how long will this major axis actually be? Okay, remember the formula said, the little expression said we are supposed to double the square root of that denominator. Well, the square root of 25 is 5, and if you double it, we have 10. Okay, so that's the length of our major axis, and again, that means 5 units in each direction away from the center. So 5 units to the left and 5 units to the right. Okay, now how about the length of our minor y-axis? Well, the square root of 9 would be 3, but that 3 goes in each direction, so our overall minor axis length is 6. Okay, using that information, we'd be able to graph it. We'll get to that here in just a second. In the meantime, let's look at another example and make sure we fully understand this. How about this one? x squared over 32 plus y plus 11, quantity squared over 36, equals 1. Now we're going to address the same five questions as above. We need to know the center, we need to know which axis is which, and the length of both of those axes. Okay, so let's begin with our center's location, h comma k. As you can see in the first term of the binomial, there is no h value being added or subtracted to uh, x. That means our h is a 0. And on the k value, supposed to say y minus k, it says plus. That means the number that follows must have been negative and changed the sign. So that is a negative 11. Our center is at 0, negative 11. Okay, so it's a little bit down in a typical graph. All right, now which axis is which? Hopefully you quickly identify that the y-axis is going to be the major axis this time because the denominator of the y-squared term is larger than the denominator of the x-squared term. So this time our ellipse is going to be longer from top to bottom than it is from left to right. And how about the lengths? How long is our major y-axis? Well, you have 36 in the denominator. The square root of 36 is 6, and that is in each direction. So our overall major axis length is 12 units. 
Okay, same procedure on the minor axis. Okay, our denominator underneath our x value for our minor axis is 32. Okay, so we take the square root of that. Unfortunately, the square root of 32 is not a nice, neat whole number. But as we saw with the circles, you're not always going to end up with whole numbers. Okay, so whatever the square root of 32 is, that is how long in each direction that axis is running. So we would double that. Okay, so whatever double the square root of 32 is, that is going to be our... Uh, length of our minor axis. Now, square root of 32 is in the ballpark of 5.5, and that doubling it would obviously give us a, a length, overall length in the area of 11 units. Okay, so the only other thing we could really do with these would be to graph them. So let's look at one final example and graph it, and then that'll pretty much be it. Okay, so here we have a new equation, x minus 2 quantity squared divided by 36 plus y plus 1 quantity squared divided by 25 equals 1. Okay, these three examples have been nice to us because they have all already equaled 1. But remember, if your ellipse does not have a 1 uh, constant over there on the other side of the equal sign, then you will divide whatever your constant is back to the uh, side with all the variables, okay, so that you can have that one as it should. Anyway, same three questions, okay, we need to know it, we need to know about the center, we need to know about the major axis, we need to know about the minor axis. Should be pretty much good to go. Center here is located at 2, negative 1, just following the formula, take a look at the major and minor axes for this particular question. Okay, obviously the denominator of x squared is larger than the denominator of y squared, so our major axis is going to be the x axis, and it should have an overall length of 12. Okay, so that would be the square root of uh, 36 doubled. Okay, so from our center point, which is in our graph over there at 2, negative 1, on our major axis, the x-axis, we are going to measure 6 units in each direction, and we will be able to put a couple more landmarks in our graph, and there they are, 6 units left and 6 units right. Okay, so that is 12 units from point to point on the major axis. So, of course, if our major axis was the x-axis, then our minor axis is the y. Okay, how many units in length will the y-axis be? Okay, in this case, it will be a 10. Okay, square root of 25 is 5. Double it is 10 units. That's 5 units in each direction from the center point. So we're going to measure 5 units up, 5 units down, and put two more landmarks for our graph. Okay, so from top to bottom, our ellipse is 10 units tall, and based on these five points, at this point, all you'd have to do is just get yourself a rough sketch of something that is circular in nature, okay, going to be a little bit longer, okay, get a nice smooth ellipse, hopefully it doesn't come out looking too much like a beat up football or anything like that, just do the best you can, we're not being graded on our artistry here, just trying to get the specifics of the ellipse in place. All right, that's pretty much it. Again, I appreciate you finding time to get your notes taken care of, and I will see you in class.